Peter, you are going already. I thought you should have waited for me. No, my wife called and said that my son is all alone in the house. I need to go and stay with him. All right, what about what we discussed last time? Will it still be as planned? Victor, leave that discussion for now. I need to go and see my son. As I said, he is alone in the house. But it won't take you time to say no or yes to what I am asking you. Victor, why is it difficult for you to understand that my son is all alone in the house? Oh, I forgot you didn't have any, so I shouldn't have expected you to understand what it means to be a father. Anyway, I will get back to you later. I hope you understand this part. Did he just insult me indirectly? Am I the one Peter is mocking? So he has been looking for a way to mock me and has finally gotten the opportunity to do so. Just because I ask him a simple question that doesn't require a long statement, but, yes or no, I don't blame him. If God had given me my own child, would he mock me? God, why do you allow people to mock me because of the gift you give? I love you, and I serve you with all my heart. I keep your words to never defile my marriage bed. I keep your word never to divorce my wife and marry another, because you said you hate divorce. I keep your words to never allow childlessness to divide my marriage, because you said that what you joined together, let nothing divide. Why is it difficult for you to bless my marriage with children? I am beginning to think you are not real. If you are, why is it difficult for you to answer prayer? Why do the righteous suffer? Why do you allow evil people to triumph in their iniquity? Because of that, when they see your children, they start to laugh at them. To them, they are the righteous, just because things are complete for them. The word is the opposite of what it should be, and I hate it. There is nothing to motivate the righteous anymore, and many have fallen because of that. Why the silent God? E, e, e. I am tired. I can't take it anymore. I can't watch my fellow humans mock me anymore. Enough is enough. My son, do you know how to dance this kind of dance? Watch me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, father. <laughs> Here, you are back. Go in there, pack your load, and get out of my house right now. Dear, what did I do? I can't remember offending you. I said, get out of my house. I am tired of marrying my fellow man. I want a woman who will bear me children, and you are not one, so leave before I do something terrible. But dear, you are the one who told me not to worry and that godly time is the best. You know everything is in the hands of God. Why are you doing this? You are still there, asking me questions. Leave my house now before I strangle you. Oh no. Devil, you are a liar. How can a man who just gave me advice not long ago suddenly turn this bitter? Pastor, please save my marriage. It is about to crash. Calm down, Sister Joy. What happened? My husband came back from work and asked me to pack my things and leave the house because he no longer wanted the marriage anymore and that he needed a woman who would bear him children. Pastor, am I God? It's okay, Sister. Joy, I will go talk to him right away. I think the devil is at work. Pastor, please do something before something goes wrong. Calm down. I am going to see him right away, and I promise everything will fall back to normal, in Jesus' name. Amen. I need another wife. I am not getting younger, and I will no longer allow anything to deceive me again, be it whatever preaching, because I no longer believe in them. They are a mere distraction. If not, people who follow it should not lack anything to the point that enemies mock us for it. Oh God, please go with me. I need your wisdom to open his eyes so that he knows that he who endures to the end will be saved. Who is that? I am coming. Brother Victor. Pastor, see, if you are here to preach to me over my plan to get another wife, you are wasting your time because I have made up my mind and there is nothing you say that will change it, so I will advise you to go back. Brother Victor, don't give Satan a chance to destroy you. Can't you see we are in battle with him? Listen, Pastor, even if I get destroyed, it is not Satan that destroys me but God. If not, why hasn't he blessed me with my own child? Is it Satan that gives children? Is it not God? Haven't I prayed enough? Why can't he answer me? Why is he answering the bad people and neglecting the good ones? I am tired, and I don't know what to believe anymore. I am sorry to say this, 
but I am beginning to doubt the existence of God. Listen, Brother Victor, God has given us everything we need, even before we were created. There is nothing he withholds from us. Whenever you are facing challenges, don't blame God for them. Because he has answered us before we ask, but Satan does everything possible to frustrate the children of God and make them turn their back on God by using what they need. For instance, the reproduction system was created by God in us right from the beginning. That is why, when you look around, you will see prostitute bearing children and throwing them away, and they continue to get pregnant and keep throwing them away. You will also see mad people who do not know their right and left bearing children. Some will kill them after, some will leave them there after and continue in their way. In fact, they don't even go to the hospital to deliver, yet nothing happens to them. You will also see bad people who specialize in bearing children for sacrifice, and you will see some who specialize in bearing children for sale. Many of them have bears more than 10 times, and they keep bearing without anything stopping them, even though they have bad intentions. You know that these groups of people by right shouldn't be able to have children, but they are having them as they want. Why? Because God has already created a reproduction system. He has already given us access to having children as we want. As long as you are a human, whether good or bad, you have a reproduction system and are able to bear children. It has nothing to do with being bad or good. And God cannot recreate what he has already created. That is why you see all the bad people partaking in it. So what am I trying to say? Why will God withhold children from his own if he allows those evils I have mentioned above? Why will those who need it find it difficult to get it, whereas those who don't need them are having them? Don't you get it? Satan is at work. God answers our prayers before we ask. He is not holding back anything from us. He has given us everything, including his son. It is Satan who is fighting those who want to live a good life and make heaven with one thing or another, so that they give up on God. Satan already knows where to touch the children of God, and they give up. If he allows us to have access to everything that God has given us, of course we will all make heaven. If we look left and see children as we want, look right and see money as we want, Look back and see food as we want, look front and see husband, wife, everything as we want, what will make us sin again, nothing, and this is the original plan of God for us before Lucifer called Satan fall, you see everything you face today is a result of the fall of Lucifer. Satan fell and started waging war against the children of God. He is making sure that no one makes it to heaven. He walks from one place to another, robbing children of God of their blessings. So why are some people having it all? While some are suffering, especially the children of God, they struggle so much. There is no body living under this surface of earth that has no one thing or another to face, although sometimes it looks as if some group of people have nothing, burthering them, especially the sinners. They always have it their way, because Satan has no business with them. He is not after them. He knew they were already destroyed. All he does is deceive them with earthly materials, and before you know it, he will destroy them so that they don't repent. But to the children of God, he fights day and night. He focuses on those who want to make heaven. He presses to see the area. He will touch us and will we give up. That is why some are crying. God, heal me. When are you going to answer me? Oh God, don't you answer prayer. Answer me. I am tired of this sickness. While some are crying, God bless me with children. It has been years now since I have been calling you. When are you going to answer me? In fact, I have given up on you. You do not answer prayers. Some are crying. God bless me with a husband. Some are crying. God bless me with money. Everybody has one thing or another to face. That is why the Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We lack one thing or the other, it is the strategy of Satan to make us sin against God, and we are the cause of it. We allow Satan to make us fall when he fell. In the Garden of Eden, God placed us. It lacks nothing, but our sin brought us out of there. Genesis 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever, understand this. Let he put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. That put forth his hand also is the cross you have to carry to return back to the original plan of God, not to lack anything. 
You have to put forth your hand to collect what you want. You have to put forth your hand to take the tree of life. You see, God does not allow the righteous to suffer. The righteous are only putting forth their hands to take back what they lost. And don't tell me you expect Satan to fold his hand and watch you take back what you lost so easily. Of course he will not do that. He will put up a fight. That is why we face one thing or another. We are in battle with Satan. We are not understanding it because God loves us so much and leaves his grace with us. If not, it won't be this easy. Wait until the rapture takes place. That is when those who are left behind will understand that the kind of battle we are into is not child play. Our existence on this earth is to take back what belongs to us, and Satan must put up a fight. When he does, you don't start blaming God. Why do you allow the saints to suffer? I will not worship you again. Who is losing? If you want to make heaven, you must suffer, you must face humiliation, you must face lack, and you must face rejection, because what you are fighting to take back is not child play. It is for those who are willing to take it. It is for soldiers who are ready to risk their lives to take it by force, even if they lose one of their eyes or legs. Heaven is not for those who cry the moment they face a small thing, and the next, they turn their back on God. There are no saints who are suffering for now because of the grace of God, so don't call a little challenge suffering. The real suffering comes after the rapture. That is why we must not allow the little challenge we are facing to make us miss the rapture. When you face challenges as a child of God, all you need is perseverance. Continue praying against the forces that are behind the delay of God's answers to your prayer, or God's gifts to us. Pray that whatever is blocking me from getting access to God's gift for us should be destroyed so that I will take my own because whatever you need is already given to us by God. You don't blame God. He has given us all. Is not an easy road at all. Of course, it was boldly written. 2 Timothy, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Revelation 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That is why, for Christ's sake, we should delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when we are weak, then we are strong. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10. And Jesus is our example. John 15 verse 20. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Earth itself is a battlefield for us Christians, and you don't go to war and start asking why I am fighting. Of course, you know you are there to fight. We are on this earth to fight until we take back what belongs to us. The earth is not our home. That is why the righteous have to fight or suffer while on earth until we return home. Remember, we came empty, and we shall go empty, so why fight to take back what belongs to you? Never lose focus. Instead, thank God for giving us his grace to always come out victorious. As long as you stand strong, you will win on this earth and after. Meanwhile, our challenges are just temporary. They can never be permanent. Thank you, Pastor, for bringing me back to my senses. I nearly got lost because of the way my friend Peter mocked me because I don't have a child. Don't allow anyone to make you feel bad. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Fighting to will is our motor, as Christians. We must suffer. And God allowed his children to suffer for these purposes. Dear, be fast. I don't want to go late. Peter. Peter. Wait. Am I the one that boy is shouting his name like that without respect? Dear, please wait. I am coming. Why are you shouting my name, James? Don't you see I am with my wife? Or am I the one who asks your wife to leave you? Is it not because you are not a man enough that makes your wife leave you? Peter why are you talking to me like that just because I called you? Is that a reason for you to mock me? Are you calling the truth a mockery? I told you nothing but the truth. If I were you, I would be ashamed to come out and speak where men are speaking, because you are not one. That's enough, Peter. You don't use people's problems to mock them because you are not God.
No, stay there. Let me finish you with my mouth. Since you don't know yourself. And let it be first and last. You shouted my name again. Look at him, no money, no wife, no children, and yet he has no respect. Peter, must you remind me how miserable my life is? Dear, that is too much. Why will you talk to your fellow man like that? Why are you mocking people? It is not good for a human to mock his fellow human, because you don't know tomorrow, and nothing is permanent. Why won't I talk to him as I like? He deserves every single word I tell him. He has no sense, so I need to speak some sense inside him. Have you forgotten that the word of God warns us against the wrong use of the tongue? 1 Peter 3, verse 10. For he who will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. James 3, verse 6. Stop using the tongue to kill people. Stop using the tongue negatively. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew 12 verses 36 to 37. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. James 1 verse 26. Forget that anyone who refuses to respect himself, I will help him with my tongue. Don't say I did not warn you. Is not everybody you will talk to anyhow and go free? There are some people you talk to anyhow and think they have forgotten it without knowing they are fighting you. You don't know who is who. That is why you must be careful with the way you use your tongue. Let's continue where we are going. There is nothing anyone can do to me. Tell me a person who knows how to use his tongue. He is a man of wisdom who is destiny to live long. I hear. Excuse me, young man. Who is he talking to? Are you referring to me? Yes, do you know a man called Andrew? Is that the greeting you are supposed to give me? Or am I as short and ugly as you are that you can't greet me? Did you just call me names? How dare you? Take that ugly looking face out of my sight. Where is he? Who did I just speak to? I thought he was my fellow human. Please, I am sorry. I am sorry. I will not use my tongue incorrectly again. God, please forgive me. I have learned my lesson. What have I done? I shouldn't have used my tongue wrongly. Dear, what happened to you? M, M, Ma. Oh no, oh no. I warn you to stop mocking people. Now look at it. I will never mock anyone again. I am a changed man. God uses suffering and hardship to produce in us godly character. Suffering keeps us dependent on God. Our personal sufferings are a source of encouragement to others. We suffer because the cross symbolizes suffering, pain, rejection, persecution, and humiliation, and Jesus did it. We are not better than him. Only those who have known sorrow and suffering can have fellowship with those in affliction. The Word of God also teaches that Christians suffer in order that they might glorify God in their lives. The Bible further teaches that Christians suffer in order that God might teach them lessons in prayer. Christians suffer in order that God might bring them to repentance. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Matthew 5 verses 10 to 12. So, as righteous people, our attitude towards suffering should not be one of complaining, bitterness, or resentment. Rather, we should say thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to take what we have lost. Of course, there are always wages for laborers. And it is only those who work that expect reward, so we must work, and to work we must endure suffering. That is the process. Thanks for watching and please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember, 
Jesus loves you.